welcome to Roanoke County Today. I'm Teresa Hall, Roanoke County's Public Information Director. Hope you had a safe and wonderful holiday. As many of you know, 2010 was a memorable year for Roanoke County. With that in mind, we thought we'd dedicate this month's show to taking a look back at some of the events and happenings over the past year that have helped shape who we are and where we're headed in 2011. It's time again to have tons of fun. Roanoke County Parks, Recreation and Tourism Department along with the Department of Economic Development invite you to the 12th Annual Tons of Fun event Saturday, February 5th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Tanglewood Mall. Don't miss the balloon sculptures, face painting, clowns, inflatable fun, rides and games, and of course, who can forget the lovable costume characters or the creative craft activities. And it's all free. For more information, call Roanoke County Parks, Recreation and Tourism at 540-387-6455. Every trip, every time. California, here I go! Buckle up so you and your friends get home safely. I must scream into the world from the top of some place very high. Seatbelt save lives. Okay. Visit NHTSA.gov. Low and slow. <laughs> My best friend, what are you going to do? Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. That is spectacular advice. Welcome back, I'm Dan O'Donnell, Assistant County Administrator, and I'm here with Pete Hayslip, who is the Director of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism. And we are here today in front of the Green Ridge Recreation Center. Today was a momentous occasion for the county. Can you tell us what happened today, Pete? Well, today we uh, dedicated the Green Ridge Recreation Center, um, and actually we are now um, open for business. Um, so we are very, very excited about bringing this facility online uh, to our to the Roanoke County citizens as well as all the citizens in the valley. Great. Can you tell us what all this facility offers to the public? Well, I, I tell you what, it's, uh, as you know, everybody has our, uh, our, our New Year's resolution, so we have state-of-the-art uh, <laughs> fitness facilities. We've got aerobics classes, both land, water aerobics, Pilates, yoga. Um, we have multiple ways for you to get in shape. You don't have to be a member, of course that's the cheapest way, uh, but you can also sign up for the classes or, or pay a daily admission. Um, we also have two full-size gymnasiums. We have a one-eighth of a mile walking track, which is, is very, very popular. And uh, I tell you what, we have uh, indoor aquatics facilities as well as outdoor aquatic facilities are like none in the area. So Great. And uh, this is uh, actually the county's second lead building so it's in, been designed and implemented with, in, with environmental sensitivity in mind can you tell us uh, we're, some about the, some of the lead features yeah we're very very proud of our lead designation and right now um, you know we started out to try to be lead certified um, there's different levels there's certifi certified there's gold silver and platinum uh, we think uh, we're gonna there's a good chance we're gonna be gold um, and we hope to find out that within the next couple of weeks um, what LEED certification is, is it helps us through our, our design process save long-term, both short-term as well as long-term energy costs. Um, I believe the uh, water systems that we are using uh, and the plumbing systems we put in the building will save us well over 500,000 gallons of water a year. Uh, I think that the, um, the energy consumption is 30% less than what would be a traditional building right. using traditional building uh, right. methods. So a lot of uh, recycled materials and um, really just uh, the whole idea was to help support uh, sustainability. Right. Now one of the big features you haven't mentioned yet and won't be available until late spring is the Splash Valley. Uh, it's kind of a small water park we have as part of this facility. Tell us about that. Well Splash Valley again another one of its kind uh, facility for the area. Two large water slides, a big water playground, what we call a spray ground, with a lot of fountains, sprays, moving waters. I think it's uh, it's like a, a, a children's a playground but with water. Uh, a, a, a much larger current river than is on the indoor facility. Um, a small uh, uh, slides for uh, what we call our tweeners, our eight, nine, ten years old, but again those two three and a half story slides of the bowl slide the enclosed slide I think are gonna really um, provide a heck of a lot of excitement right. for uh, our county as well as our valley residents 
Yeah, that's going to be a, an amazing feature once it's all complete right. for the spring. Um, now, can you tell our viewers how they can find out more about the facility and if they want to become members? Well, you can um, certainly go on uh, Roanoke County Parks. Um, dot com and uh, our web page is a lot of information just about everything you want to know by just hitting Green Ridge Recreation Center. You can also call our facility at 777-6300 uh, and uh, our customer service people will be able to provide you with whatever information you need or stop by. Uh, we are now open uh, pretty much from 5.30 in the morning to 10 o'clock at night, Monday through uh, Friday. And on weekends, Saturday, where it's 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And Sundays, it's 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So during those hours, please come on, come on by and take a look. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Well, Pete, thanks. Congratulations on the grand opening. That's January 1st, and mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a wonderful addition to our community. And thanks for all your hard work on this project. Uh, we certainly do appreciate it. And, we're excited about the opportunities for our citizens. And we are here at the Green Ridge Recreation Center at Splash Valley Water Park. So Pete, we've been open at Green Ridge for a few months now. How is it going? Well, we think it's been going fabulous. Um, uh, we uh, have obviously uh, exceeded our expectations here uh, from a standpoint of membership and program participation. But, you know, that's not the most important thing. You know, I'm here a lot and I talk to our customers and our participants and you know, hearing a lot of good positive things. Um, we got great staff, great customer service, um, and uh, people are, seem to be really, really excited about uh, the opportunities that they get here at, at Green Ridge. Right, I do hear a lot of positive comments mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. public. And what is Splash Valley? Here we are at Splash Valley. Could you tell us what, what this is? Well, you know, Splash Valley, um, you know, it's kind of part two of the Green Ridge uh, Recreation Center. It's a separate part, mm -hmm. but uh, it is what we would call a, a mini water park, and it's it's family oriented. You know, you'll see by uh, some of the facilities we have here, we offer something from the from the toddlers all the way up to the oldest adult. You know, we have a uh, very uh, interactive spray ground, mm -hmm. a lot of moving water, fountains, uh, buckets dumping, and uh, little slides, uh, and then over to what we call our huge, I guess, uh, uh, man size or adult size here. Um, an enclosed tube, which is three and a half stories tall. We have a um, what's called a bowl slide, which is really, really an exciting, one of the more exciting slides out here on the market nowadays. And, and we're told that that's going to be a very, very popular attraction. We have a nice lazy river in here, a nice current river, um, some water cannons, a little bit of shade, and, and really just a, just a real uh, uh, aquatic facility that everybody can come and interact but also uh, sit back and relax and, and get some sun right and and when when will be will this facility be open to the public uh we'll be opening up us uh, uh the grand opening will be uh, friday may 28th at, at four o'clock and so we're certainly excited about that mm -hmm. and uh that will really will kick off pretty much our open season for the summer we'll have limited hours uh during the weekdays four to seven until june 10th when everybody gets out of school and then from june 10th uh, Monday, well, really seven days a week. It'll be from 11 to 7 day, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Now, the important thing is um, from every day uh, from 11 a.m. to noon is uh, Roanoke County residents and our Super Splash members okay. only. And so after that, you know, starting at 12 is when non-residents will be allowed admission. So you don't need to be a member of, no. of Green Ridge Recreation no. Center to use... Splash Valley, and I, yeah, and so I'm, it's open to the public. Right, right, and that's, I think, some of the misinformation that's been out there is that you have to be a member to uh, use Splash Valley. You know you don't. But you don't have to be a member. No, no. Okay. It's so, open for daily so admission. So daily admission. Can you tell us what the rates are for daily admission? Yeah, for uh, for uh, an adult uh, non-resident, it'll be $9 a day. Uh, for a county resident, 7 For a youth, it'll be um, $8 for a non-resident, uh, uh, $6 for a um, county youth. And then uh, for a senior rate, it'll be $7 for non-county and $5 for uh, Roanoke County. Okay, and you, you briefly went through the hours, but you, could you tell us when you're gonna be open again? Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll start um, uh, Friday, uh, uh, May 28th, and that'll be uh, uh, four to seven. And then the weekends will be 11 to seven. Mm -hmm. And then uh, weekdays after June 10th, It'll be 11 to 7 all the way through okay. the summer. 
Uh, will, would this facility be open for private rentals if somebody actually wanted to rent it? We, um, we are right now developing that rental program. Uh -huh. uh, we, we are anticipating, you know, some fairly large crowds, so we're, we want to make sure that we have room to accommodate uh, those types of groups. But yes, if people are interested in group rentals, mm -hmm. by all means, give us a call. Okay, well, it's a great facility. We're getting ready to open it, and it really does look beautiful. So congratulations right. on all the work you and your staff have done. Thank you. Getting this together. Um, and how do people find out more about the Splash Valley or the Green Ridge Recreation Center? Well, I think that the best way and most uh, complete source of information will be our website, RoanokeCountyParks.com. And uh, just click on that old Splash Valley or Green Ridge Rec Center, and, and pretty much everything you need to know will be there. Oh, great. Thanks for being with us sure. today, Pete. Look forward to jumping into the water myself. Come on. I am stuffed. After that meal, I have got to pass gas. Uh, powder room's right there. No! Daddy's gas can kill us all! That's right. Toxic clouds like the one I'm about to unleash could make everyone deathly ill. Even that baby of yours. Be right back. Secondhand smoke contains hydrogen cyanide and other deadly gases. What a guy. Oh, he is a keeper. Don't pass gas. Take it outside. Welcome back. We're here today to celebrate the grand opening of St. Francis Service Dog's new kennel building here at the St. Francis campus. And with me today is Cabell Yule, the executive director of St. Francis. Welcome. Thank you. Cabell, now tell us about this project, this, this beautiful kennel building and how it all began. Uh, this building, we began planning it years ago. We did a lot of research into this building to make it a state-of-the-art building with all the latest innovations for our dogs. The purpose of this building, all of our operations now are out of this building. All of our offices are here. Also, there are kennels here to house our dogs in advanced training. So it's going to change the way we operate, make it much more efficient, and uh, it's going to save us money in the long run. Now, Cabell, I was with you several years ago when we looked at your initial building. This is a much bigger project than, than we'd ever imagined it becoming. It's, it's very, very nicely done, and I know it costs a lot of time and money. Can you tell us about that fundraising effort? Sure. Uh, we have been raising money for the past few years. We haven't completely finished paying for this building, so the fundraising effort is ongoing. We decided to go ahead and build because we had enough money to get started. We also recognized that in the down economy, we were able to build this building for 20% cheaper than the estimates had been a couple years ago. Ago. Also, because of the timing, we were able to employ local people and kind of put, invest our money back into the community at a time where we felt it was best for us and best for the community. So we took a leap of faith and we did it anyway, and I think we have a better building for it and um, we think everything's going to work out just fine in the end, but we do still need people's support to help us finish this project. Well, your mission is very important, and we, we know that the animals that you're training at this facility are very special to the partners that you're serving. Can you tell us a little bit about what's inside the building and the kennel runs and, and so forth? Sure. Um, when you come into the building, there are several office spaces. There's also a large room where the trainers spend their time and where they do their paperwork and talk to each other about training methods and things like that. There's a large grooming space where we bathe the dogs and groom them and also they can have vet exams in that space. There's an isolation kennel for dogs that aren't feeling so well and that room has its own HVAC system so the air doesn't mix with the rest of the building. It also has its own entrance and exit so that uh, diseases that track on your feet like parvo won't be passed on to the other animals. Then of course there's the heart of the building which is the kennel portion. There's 12 kennels in that portion. They're made to house two dogs each. Uh, the floors are radiant heated for their comfort in the winter. They all have their own individual outdoor runs. That room is full of sunlight. It's very airy, it's very bright in order to keep the dogs, again, feeling comfortable and relaxed. There's speakers in that room where we pipe in music. And if you go in there, you'll find the dogs are very quiet and peaceful. You don't walk in and hear barking and things like that. The dogs are very happy there, and that's what we're trying to accomplish. You also have veterinary services here in this facility? Eventually, we hope to. Presently, we still rely on our vet partners in the community who are incredibly good to us. But we would love one day to be able to have a vet come here and see our dogs here. So that's part of the plan for the future. Yes. Well, tell us a little bit about St. Francis and some of your partners, and I believe you said you were the only one 
in in this area like this? We are. There are three service dog organizations in Virginia. St. Francis is the largest. Uh, a lot of people think that St. Francis is a national organization. We're not. We're based here in Roanoke County and we serve the entire state of Virginia. We are nationally and internationally known, however, for the quality of our dogs. We're one of the very one of a very few number of organizations that are accredited through Assistance Dogs International in the world. And so it's something I think that this community really can be proud of. And the dogs that you train, is there a fee for that? Or if your partners needed assistance, is there a fee for a dog? Again, a lot of people don't realize this. These dogs are very expensive to train. It costs St. Francis between twenty and $25,000 per dog, and it takes two years. However, they are placed with our partners for free. Uh, there is not a charge for these dogs. So people, otherwise, most people wouldn't be able to have one. So. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing thing, but we do fundraise to make the whole thing possible. Cabell, it's a wonderful service that you're providing to your partners. We're so grateful that you're here in Roanoke County. This campus is gorgeous and this building is amazing. Thank you for being with us today and we appreciate it. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It can be a little awkward when your friend tells you he's been diagnosed with a mental illness. But what's even more awkward is, if you're not there for him, he's less likely to recover. I'm here to help, man, whatever it takes. Interested in keeping up with Roanoke County? Follow us on Twitter and Facebook or find us on YouTube. For a link to county departments using social media to communicate, visit our website at RoanokeCountyVA.gov. Welcome back to Roanoke County Today. I'm joined by George Simpson and Diana Rosepep. Both are with the county and are here to give us an update on two big projects. One, the roundabout at Penn Forest Elementary School and construction of a new library nearby. George, Diana, thank you for taking the time to bring our viewers up to date on these two big projects. George, let's go ahead and start with you. The roundabout here at Penn Forest Elementary is now open to traffic. It, it must be very exciting to bring this project to completion for you. It, it is, it was a, a tough project. You know, we had a very short schedule. We had about four months to pull it off. And we actually opened the day early, so we're real, real pleased with that, but. Uh, you wanted to get it open in time for school, in right? In time for school, which was the 23rd, so we actually opened the 22nd. But uh, Very close. <laughs> as we discussed, it's, there's a lot to do in a, a very small area to, to do it in, so. Uh, have to really give uh, kudos to the contractor, WNL Construction out of Chill mm -hmm. Howie. They worked uh, long hours and weekends and they, and they took pride in what they did. So we're very fortunate to have a good contractor and a good team. So we're, we're real pleased with it. There's um, t the, the reason for the roundabout sort of twofold. One is uh, road improvements, but also the to be an entrance to the new South County Library. Exactly. It was a little challenging because we have a five-legged roundabout, which are, they're not common, but we're serving uh, the school, the Penfar School, the park, both sides of Merriman Road, and the new entrance, as you said, to the library. So a lot going on uh, in a small, small area. Well, I thought it was important to, to bring this project up to date for citizens because if you don't live in this area, you may not know that the roundabout is open now. Exactly. Yeah, and I think people will, will, again, once they get used to it, and like it because it keeps traffic moving, but it also, a problem we had on Merriman Road was trying to calm traffic, uh, you know, uh, cars and trucks coming down the hill would, would develop a high rate of speed, so this slows it down and manages traffic, and I think it's going to work out well, really well. Well, standing here and watching the traffic, everyone seems to be able to, to follow the pattern pretty well. Yeah, it seems like it's working out real well. All right. Well, I know you're happy too, Diana, because I'm this thrilled. is the entr entrance to what's going to be uh, the new South County Library. So this is a big milestone to have this part completed. It's really exciting to see, and it's fun to drive on. I would encourage everybody to come out and try it. <laughs> it's a larger roundabout. Yes, it is, and it's really clearly visible. It's just a great design, and I would like to compliment George and, and the construction crew, too, for the great job they've done. I'm looking forward to the library being the next step in this project too for that right. last that last leg to open well, we're next here, summer. Right. Well, we're here at early September. Tell us about uh, or give us an update on the construction that's going on and taking place with the with the new library. Uh, a lot of basic construction's gone on. A lot of drainage and exciting things like that that are necessary, absolutely necessary for the library to have a secure future and a firm right. foundation, as we say. 
But the really exciting news is that structural steel will start going up very soon. Um, I would imagine within a week or two. And I think when people see that, they'll start to get a sense of the real building going up and that it's progressing. Well, I saw one portion that is up uh, up in the air. Is that a st going to be a staircase or what is, what it is, is that? It is a staircase. A lot of people think that's either the biggest elevator oh. in North America <laughs> or uh, the second story. I don't know which, but that's the staircase, I believe. Is that correct, yes. George? Yes. Uh -huh. What is the timeline for the project? It's really on schedule. Uh, it will expect we expect it to open next August or September. Anyway, late in the fall or late in the summer, early fall. And how does how much does weather impact a, a project? We're going into the winter, and I'm, I'm sure that has a big bearing on on what you're able to accomplish. It certainly did this last winter. We hope this winter is a little kinder to us. I know it impacted George to some degree on the roundabout project too. It's just the one uncontrollable feature. That's what I was going to say. It's something that you're, is out of your control completely. Yep. Yeah, anytime you have a project, you have to deal with the weather, and it's a, it's a big factor. All right. Well, Diana, do you keep um, updates on the, on the South County Library on your website? We do, and uh, we have pictures of it that we hope people will go to take a look at and see what it's going to look like next right. summer. Well, this is exciting. One part of the project is now complete. George, congratulations. Well, thank you. Good and, job, George. Yes. <laughs> and Diana, as always, thank you for the update on the library. I know we'll be talking to you again. I'm sure. <laughs> it's an exciting project, it though. It is. It is. We're really excited. We are, too. All right. Everyone, stay with us. We'll be right back. It's time again to have tons of fun. Roanoke County Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Department, along with the Department of Economic Development, invite you to the 12th Annual Tons of Fun event, Saturday, February 5th, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Tanglewood Mall. Don't miss the balloon sculptures, face painting, clowns, inflatable fun, rides and games, and, of course, who can forget the lovable costume characters or the creative craft activities. And it's all free. For more information, call Roanoke County Parks, Recreation, and Tourism at 540-387-6455. I can cause sudden headaches, dizziness, trouble walking, talking, seeing. What am I? I am a stroke. Learn to recognize a stroke. Interested in keeping up with Roanoke County? Follow us on Twitter and Facebook or find us on YouTube. For a link to county departments using social media to communicate, visit our website at RoanokeCountyVA.gov. Welcome back. I'm Dan O'Donnell, Assistant County Administrator, and we are here today with Pete Hayslip, the Director of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism, and Anne Marie Green, our General Services Director, to talk about LEED certification. We have actually had two LEED uh, facilities certified, the Green Ridge Recreation Center and the Fleet Services Center, and these are the two department heads that were involved in making sure those LEED facilities were achieved. Welcome. Thank you. Glad you could be with us today. Right. Anne Marie, can you tell us what LEAD means and, and uh, tell us about the levels of LEAD? LEAD stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, and there are four levels there's basic and silver, gold, and platinum. Mm -hmm. And how do you get your building certified? Well, the, it's a process that really starts at the very beginning. You need to hire an architect that understands the process. The award itself is given by the U.S. Green Building Council, and there is a um, checklist that you look at as you go through the design process and figure out what it is you think you're going to be able to achieve in that particular building. And you work with the architect and the contractor, and at the end of the project, you review it and send it to the U.S. Green Building Council with the, um, the ones checked that you were able to achieve, and then they give you mm -hmm. the award based on, on how many points you've gotten. Okay. And your facility that's LEED certified is the Fleet Services Center, which, right. which sounds like a pretty difficult project because you're talking about all kinds of vehicles and emissions and uh, uh, oil and gas and all of those kind of noxious materials. That's right. So, so what features of the Fleet Service Center uh, qu help qualify for LEED? Well, one of them you just talked about is oil. Um, we burn our waste oil in a waste oil burner that um, helps to heat the Bay Areas because we have inflow radiant heat. So that takes care of that. That was one of them. Another one was harvesting daylight. We have a lot of windows in the building, a lot of skylights. And so there's a computerized system that reduces the overhead light to pay it depending on how much light is coming in from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. We also have um, 
a lot of natural uh, materials in the building. We have uh, stormwater detention was part of it, the way we did that, a lot, a lot of natural plants around the building, things like that. LEED often makes a building, or it always should make a building, even better for the people who are actually occupying it, and that definitely happened at the Fleet Service Center. Great. Okay. And Pete, we're here at the Green Ridge Recreation Center, mm -hmm. and we recently received notification that this facility is LEED Gold. Right. And that's, that's quite an accomplishment to be LEED Gold. Definitely. Um, are you aware of, of any other fac recreational facilities that have achieved well, LEED? I'd, we pretty certain there are none in Virginia, and I think we're probably one of 14 in, in the, across the country of uh -huh. recreation facilities. Uh, very, very difficult to get that gold certification. It takes a lot of work, and I think it takes really a commitment you know, by the locality, um, because as it goes through, as you go through the design process, some things may be slightly more expensive. However, the, the goal is to recover those costs and reduce those costs over a period of time that'll help you pay for that, um, that little higher level of equipment. And so uh, it's a good thing, okay. it's a good thing. Can you tell us what some of the features are in this facility in Green Ridge? Well, one is we've used a really a, a new um, water filtration system. Uh, it's uh, a, re a regeneration system that um, requires much less water use. Mm -hmm. When, matter of fact, they, are, they have uh, estimated that we'll save well in excess of half a million gallons of water. Right. That you know doesn't go into the sewer, doesn't right. go into our creeks. It continually recirculate. We used a lot of recyclable materials um, with, within the building. We. Um, we have a heating system that utilizes the dehumidification process within the building. Um, we recycled a, a huge percentage, a very large percentage of the um, construction materials, waste construction materials, um, which kept it out of the landfill. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, many, many, many different things that you can do. Mm -hmm. Some are small and, and, mm -hmm. and others are big, but when you add it all together, it's really a savings on the long term for the citizens as well as for the environment. How about the energy efficiency? I know this is an energy efficient. Does that provide you long-term operational yes, cost savings? Uh, we're, we're looking, I think, uh, again, by about a 40%. Uh, in this gold lead certification, uh, the, the process we went through for our heating and all that, it's going to save us probably 40% in, mm -hmm. in, in the operations on a year-to-year -year basis. Right. So it's not just environmental. It's oh, no. no economic it's savings, savings in the long run for right. operations. Right. So that's, that's important. And it's an investment. We invested up front for that long-term savings. Okay. How, who are your partners? Who, who actually did, did the design and the, uh, the construction for these facilities? Uh, Mosley Architects um, out of Richmond. And um, Councilman Hunsaker did our aquatics portion, mm -hmm. working for, obviously, right. uh, First Choice Partners, including English construction also. Okay, and I, who are your partners? Spectrum Design uh -huh. was the architect and engineering firm, and Thor was our construction right. company. Well, once again, congratulations to you folks mm -hmm. on the great job you've been Thanks. doing and providing the efficiency and the environmental quality that we we need today. So Thanks. Thank you for It's the right thing do. to do. It, it definitely is. It's Thanks right for being with us today. Sure. What's the buzz about Green Ridge Recreation Center? It's a place that's close to my house that I can come and get in shape. We saw the quality of the exercise environment and the opportunity for our kids to enjoy it and uh, take advantage of really a cutting edge fitness facility. The staff here is wonderful. They are very hands on. They love to help people. Join the fun through daily admission or membership. Green Ridge, healthy fun for everyone. We hope you've enjoyed this month's Roanoke County Today, highlighting some of the memorable events of the past year. Before we leave you, a quick reminder that real estate assessments will begin arriving in the mail this month. If you have any questions or want to learn more about the county's real estate tax relief program, please contact the numbers on your screen. That's all for now. Thanks so much for joining us and hope to see you again next month.